Hey everybody, um, I hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to do an update for my um, prostate cancer journey videos. Um, a few people have asked me, well, what's going on? Um, can you do another video? Uh, just let everybody know what's happening right now. And I can tell you that for the most part, I'm, I'm doing really well. I'm about seven months um, since surgery has happened. And, you know, th things are progressing. I'm not where I want to be, but I've made a lot of progress and a lot of gains and a lot of positive strides. And, you know, I just hope that, you know, this video can help somebody, encourage somebody, and, and maybe give you the strength to, to continue to take the next steps and whatever your struggle is, whatever your challenge is. But this particular one, you know, we're, we're talking about um, prostate cancer. So for those of you that may not have um, seen any of the other videos or just want a, a quick catch up, I'll give you, like, you know, a short brief timeline. And so approximately um, January of 2021, um, you know, I went through my normal physical process and have been having some, let's call it discomfort, if you will. And I met with my primary care physician. Um, he did the uh, necessary test and, you know, the blood work and so forth. Um, and it came, the blood work came back that showed I had elevated PSA levels. Um, so we reran the test just to make sure that it wasn't some kind of fluke or anything. Well, it turns out the, the levels were elevated for sure. Two tests um, concluded that. So about February 17th, give or take, I met with a, um, a, a prostate cancer specialist, urologist, um, and we had some pretty good conversations and we, we kind of started the, the journey from that point. Um, uh, March uh, 13th, I had a, a MRI that, and an MRI machine, this is, I, I, you know, they have the ones that are open now. I wish I would have had that one because being inside of the MRI machine was really just claustrophobic. It was uncomfortable, but I, I made it through and you will too, if you should have to have that, that kind of exam. But in the MRI, um, the results did show, um, did indicate that there um, was possibly um, some cancer there. Uh, it was definitely a small tumor. And so the next step was to have a biopsy. So at the end of March, I believe March 29th, I had a transperineal biopsy of the prostate with the ultrasound. I know it's about to say, but basically they, they, they um, put you under, you, you cannot be awake for that procedure. And then they took um, 23 samples of, of my prostate. And when the um, results came back, it showed that eight of those samples, eight of the 23 at least, um, had cancerous cells in it. So that validated, yes, it was cancer. And you know the, the nightmare at that point continued to unfold. Um, so April 9th, I met with the urologist to discuss next steps and we talked about radiation and surgery and so forth. And he, he just, you know, was was blunt with me, which I needed. He said, you know, um, the best course of action from his experience was to have the surgery because the re radiology for me, it might um, um, fix it for now, as he said, but his experience is in, in, in maybe seven to 10 years, we would be back at, at this step again. So let's just not have to come back here again. Plus the, the radiation had its own set of challenges to deal with. So um, my doctor was, um, you know, really compassionate, um, and sh you know, assured me that he was with me every step of the way. And, and he has been, he's been amazing. I, I can't ask for another um, another doctor that, that walk, you know, walked through this journey with me. Um, so July 8th, and, and I know you say it's a big gap between April and July, well, we, you know, there was the big surge of COVID operations and such were, were put on hold because the, the hospitals were filling up so much with COVID that it was hard to do any types of um, surgeries. And then plus it allowed me, which was a blessing for me because it allowed me time to go see my, my daughter graduate from college. It was, it was just awesome to be there with her. But then come July 8th, um, that was the surgery date. You know, I had the prostate prostatectomy, you know, the prostate was removed and I've been, I've been on a journey of recovery ever since. And it's just been one struggle after another with some good days and some bad days, but I'm still standing, I'm still carrying on and, and, and the recovery is um, 
you know, getting better each day. Um, I can tell you that right after the surgery, you know, that the first week or so after the surgery, you, you have to have a catheter in. And that was just the most just disgustingly uncomfortable um, episode for me. It was just pain all the time, 24 hours a day that catheter hurt. But I couldn't take it out. I had to, I had to have it. And they even gave me some oxycodone to to um, help with the pain. And it, for me, it didn't do anything. Um, the only thing that helped me with the pain was calling on the name of Jesus. And, I, I, and when I would do that, I'm telling you, I cry out to the Lord, the pain would, would, would just go away during that time. But eventually, yeah, it would return. But that those drugs they gave me just for me, they didn't work. So fast forward to about July 19th, catheter was removed. I'm going, oh yes, now I can start um, recovering. I don't have that pain to deal with anymore. They took that thing out. Then a whole nother set of issues came up and that was the, um, the, the, the incontinence, you know, the um, urinary incontinence. Um, so I would say the road to recovery has two key parts, the physical part and uh, the mental part. And the physical part, there, there were several issues. Um, you know, the body healing from the surgery, you know, I still have, I still have scars on my abdomen, six scars from when they, where they did the surgery. Um, they, they're a lot better than they were for sure, but they're still there, you know, and I don't know, I don't know if they'll ever go away, um, but, but I'm hoping that they'll really subside it at some point and become, become less noticeable. And then there's the, um, the urinary incontinence or the leaking, that's just been, <laughs> a nightmare. And then the third part of the, um, the healing process, at least physically, um, deals with the um, er erectile dysfunction that comes from it. It's just a natural part of that recovery process. And it, that's mentally draining as well. So if you're going to go through this surgery or any other types of surgery or medical procedures, you know, you, you got to make sure you, you, you get your mind right, that you're grounded spiritually that you have um, as much support as you can from the people that care about you, you know, your, your, your family, your friends. You know, I, I've had, you know, my wife has been absolutely amazing. My daughters have been absolutely amazing. My coworkers have been supportive. My, my friends have been absolutely amazing. And my, my church and, 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 and the various churches that I interact with have, have been just absolutely amazing. So. I've, I've had a groundswell of people that support, but at the same time, it's still a battle that you have to fight on your own because they can't fight it for you. So you got to stay in the fight. And so I can say um, seven months later, you know, I still have the scars like I said, and you know, they'll fade away one day, hopefully. But the urinary leakage and the incontinence, that, that was just a horrific thing. At least, at, at least for the first few months, you know? So if I drank anything, the littlest amount of water, it would just leak right out. It seemed like there was no barrier, no stop. It just comes right out. And, and even when I wasn't drinking anything, you know, I had a great deal of leakage because the kidneys were all, are all, always producing urine. So that was, that was um, horrible. <laughs> So let's say that, you know, for several months, um, five months at least, I had to wear, you know, the men's Depends underwear. But inside of that, I had to put a urinary pad. And that's how bad the leakage was. I had to have a urinary pad to catch most of the leakage. And then the Depends caught any overflow. And that's just how I lived 24 seven for, for about those first five months. And also had to get like a pad to sleep on because in the night, if it would leak too much and come through, even the, the, the pins, you know, you didn't want it to leak onto, onto the mattress and stuff. So, you know, I think that happened maybe once or twice and it wasn't that bad, but it still happened. So I was glad that I was, um, at least my wife was for thinking enough to get the pads and, and she was just, just amazing in helping me. Um, but about December 8th or so, so around five months into it, I felt comfortable enough to stop to stop using the the, the pins underwear, and and use my own underwear. And I can't tell you how liberating that was. I can't tell you how my self esteem just just shot through the roof when I was able to to use my own underwear again. Something so small that people take for granted, 
that 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 I, I just cherish now is just having on my own underwear. <laughs> and it might sound silly to somebody, but if you're going through this, you, you, you will understand what I'm talking about. Now, I still have to have the pads inside of my underwear, but at least it's my own underwear. And so that happened maybe um two months ago when I got that confidence. And since then, that's that's the mode that I've been in. Now it's been about 204 straight days now that I've been doing my um my Kigo exercises. I've done over 20,000 repetitions easily. I have an app that tracks it for me, but I'm still leaking. And so that tells you just just how challenging this thing could be. Um, but you know there's improvement you know it's not as bad now as it was then you know I was going through maybe eight to twelve pads a day and now I'm going through maybe three three or four so it's improvement it's not where I want to be I want to be to the point where I don't have to have the pads at all and I might still be some months away from that but I got to keep grinding this out you know so I'm, I met with my urologist again maybe um it was early December, I think late November, about two months ago. And he, he told me, you know what? You just have to stay the course. And when he examined everything, looked at the information, cause I keep data logs. Cause anybody that knows me, I, I look at data and cause it, it helps to tell a story. And he saw that and he's just like, you know what? You are actually above average right now. You are doing better than some of the other guys that had the surgery at the same time you had it, you know, within that, that, those same days that you had the surgery. You're, you're, you're doing better than them. So stay encouraged. Just don't stop. Don't, don't get discouraged and quit. So that, that was something that, that really helped me. And I, and I kind of, you know, say, oh, why don't you guys tell us, you know, in the beginning that this is what we have to expect. And he said, well, I don't really have an answer for that. All I can tell you is recovery can take up to a year. Sometimes it can take a little more than a year, but the progress that you're making, you know, you, you're going to be okay. You just got to stay the course. Everybody's physical body is different. And some take a little longer, some take a little shorter, but he's like, you, you're doing great. Just don't get discouraged because I, I know it's frustrating. So I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to hold on and, and keep, um, keep moving forward, if you will. Um, another thing that happened is um, a couple of months ago, maybe October, I started going to it's late September, early October, I started seeing a physical therapist to help me make sure I'm doing my Kegels right and, and give me any guidance and advice so I can get better and make sure I'm on track. And I probably went to him about um, two and a half months because it, it came a point in time where I had two consecutive meetings and he said, you know, it's nothing that I can do for you. You came in here doing the right things. You know, he helped adjust my frequency of exercises a little, um, gave me some um, suggestions on how to improve the exercises. But he said, I, you're one of the people that came in already in a good place as far as doing what you need to do. So, you know, I stopped, I have stopped going to him because I figured why well, keep paying for that if, if I'm not really getting any benefit from it, especially with them telling me, you know, twice that, he's not sure what else he can do to help so you know we move on but it's a lot of information that i have experienced from that i can help the next guy and i suggest to to anybody that's that's gonna um have this type of surgery you you i, I advise you to have and it's my personal opinion i'm not a doctor but i've been through this go to the physical therapist before the surgery as soon as you realize you you have an issue and you you're gonna just you know have surgery Start, start seeing a physical therapist so they can start getting you on track before the surgery. I wish I would have known that. I wish I would have done that. I think it would have helped. But, you know, here I am now. I'm, I'm still, still moving forward. But he, even if you don't do it before the surgery, go see the physical therapist because, you know, I did a lot of research which helped me be prepared. And my physical therapist noted that. But you might not have the same tenacity to, to investigate and, and research and figure things out. But that physical therapist is going to help you. I promise you it's going to be worth it. So um, fast forward, here I am seven months after surgery. You know what? I'm tired. I'm tired of this leakage. I'm tired of the struggle. I'm tired of the erectile dysfunction. I'm tired of, you know, when... You know, if I if I sneeze, I leak. If I cough, I leak. 
it, uh, it's hard to do any exercises that take it, put any pressure on your abdomen because it it causes you to leak sitting up too fast. You gotta you gotta watch how you sit, watch how you sit up, sit down. You know, it, it, you get you're retraining your body how to how to um, perform all of those functions again. So although I'm tired of it, I'm thankful to be here. Although sometimes it gets so frustrating. Sometimes I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I, you know, I used to just break down and cry from time to time because it was just, it was so overwhelming, you know. And but I would that would give me an opportunity to pray, to lift my hands to heaven, to ask God to help me, and then I would get the strength to to move on to the next thing. So I'm saying that to say, yes, we're gonna go through struggles in life, but don't don't give up. I I, I really feel that. If I quit, I'm gonna miss out on a victory. You know, I struggle daily with leakage, but I and I absolutely hate. I, I, I um just 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 really dislike having to to wear these pads. But I have to push on. I, I I push on, and I want you to push on no matter what your struggle is. You know, I'm getting more confident going outside the house now. There was a period of time where I wouldn't go anywhere because the leakage was so bad. I didn't want to be out in public and try to have to figure out how to change in a, in a public restroom and all that. You know, I was terrified to leave the house. You know, I used to carry a bag with me to have, all, you know, pads and the pens and wipes and all kind of, you know, um, extra garbage bags and all kind of stuff in it. But now I can leave the house without that because I know how to manage it and the leakage is not as bad. You know, so so things change, things do get better. And no matter what you're dealing with, it it will get better if you just stick in there. You know, I still struggle with the um, erectile dysfunction, and that that's just a part of the recovery. They just, you know, as as, as my doctor said, uh, my uh, two of my doctors said, even my daughter that's, um, you know, studying to be a doctor said, you know, you just had that whole part of your body <laughs> rearranged. You know, it's gonna take time for everything to come back together. And 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 I and I have to be patient and, and give it time. You know, talking about the ED, that's a whole nother set of videos that that I can do. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do those, but just the get the guys that's going through it, talk to me. It's, it's guidance and advice I can give you. But just suffice it to say that I have high hope for recovery in that area. And I, I'm following my doctor's instructions and orders and doing the things that I need to do so that the improvement will occur. Um, so I'll just leave you with that seven months in, I'm still in the healing process, seven months in, I'm, I'm still encouraged that things are going to get better, seven months in, I'm, I'm thankful that I did have the surgery, that I, I, I'm, I'm moving this to, to the behind me column, I've had at least one, two, three, four, five, PSA test over the last, um, since the surgery, and all of them have came back as um, undetectable, which is excellent. That's what we wanna see. My urologist is gonna have me taking tests. Um, he said for two years after the surgery, because they wanna be extra sure, that's just their protocol. Usually it's one year, but they upped it to two years in, in recent past, just because they, you know, they, they just wanna be doubly sure. So I don't mind doing that. I, I, I wanna be sure as well. So stay in the struggle, don't give up, don't quit. I, I, I'll probably do another video in a couple months and, and let you know, definitely when I get to the one year mark, I'm, I'm hoping, praying that I'll be able to report to you that I'm dry again, that I'm not having to deal with pads anymore, that erectile dysfunction has gone away, that, that, that everything that I need to do, it, it, my body needed to do to heal is, 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 is doing that. But even if it takes longer than that, you know what? I'm gonna stay in the fight. I gotta keep on moving. You know, it, it reminds me of um, um, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29, where, where it says something like, um, you know, the Lord, he, he gives strength to those who grow tired and increases strength to those that are weak. And, and it's been a lot of times when I've been tired. It's been a lot of times when I've been weak. But I can tell you that every time, at least for me, calling on the Lord has brought me to the place that I needed to be so that I can carry on one more step. Um, it's definitely been a journey. If it's somebody that I can help and give direct information to 
and, and um, just let you know details about what helped me that it might help you. All you got to do is just reach out. I do my best to um, respond and to help you. Other than that, I hope this update um, helped somebody. Um, I'm looking forward to moving on with life. I'm looking forward to, to getting back in the pulpit and preaching again. I just haven't preached since um, right before the surgery. So it's been quite a while. I'm looking, I've re restarted um, teaching Bible study again, which, which is something that I really enjoy doing. Um, I've, do, I've restarted exercising. I can, do, I can do light weights. And again, things that, that don't require a lot of pressure on my abdomen. Um, I'm able to, you know, get on the elliptical and, and get through some, grind some of that out. So, you know, things are starting to, 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 to go back to a, a pre-surgery um, state, but it's not there yet. But I have to, I just have to have hope. So pray for me as I pray for you. Um, yes, I'm asking for your prayers. I always can use prayers and I'm so thankful for them. But if this video encourages anybody, and you think it'll help anybody, feel free, please share it with them. Cause all I wanna do is get the word out and really tell guys, you know, what this experience is really like, because there's not a lot of videos that really talk about, you know, or information out there that really, was, I was able to find to help me. So I'm hoping that this is a help to you or somebody else. So God bless, stay encouraged and, and may the Lord keep you. And I look to um, do an update in a couple months and, and prayerfully let you know that there's been some, some advances in my progress. Bye for now. Amen.